Praise the Lord, everyone. Sean back with another video for you all. Um, today, I actually wanted to talk about something that I've, I've talked about before and uh, at least a couple of previous other videos I've done, I believe. But I wanted to give it its own separate video. And this is in Matthew 24, how we'll just read, I'll read verses 40 and 41 then shall two be in the field the one shall be taken and the other left two women shall be grinding at the mill the one shall be taken and the other left so for like for myself for the longest time uh growing up you know i honestly believed that matthew 24 was dealing about the rapture and uh you'll have those who believe in post-tribulation uh rapture will tend to come to Matthew 24 and basically see how, you know, it looks as if one person is raptured out and the other one is left. And this doesn't take place until, you know, all of these bad things kind of start happening. So um, I just wanted to give my reason why I believe that this is not actually talking about a rapture. But this is actually talking about uh, those who will heed the warnings that Christ is giving of his uh, impending return and those that will basically flee to safety and those that will not heed to Christ's returns. And, you know, they'll suffer the consequences for that. So we're just going to go up. And we're going to start here at Matthew 24, 15 through 23. Now, whenever I talk about Matthew 24, I always like to set the stage um, by talking just briefly about how this whole chapter of Matthew 24 basically kicks off from his disciples asking uh, what will be the sign of your return? And, you know, when will we know that, you know, that end of the age is, is coming? So this is Jesus answering, you know, those those questions. So here, you know, what we're looking at here is, you know, when will we know that uh, Jesus, the son of man, is going to be returning? So we'll start reading. It says, Christ says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, the prophet standing in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto, those, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lord, here, Lord, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. So, this is Christ talking about his return. And basically, Christ is saying, when you see certain things coming on the scene, understand that my time to return is near. So we actually see him talking about when you when they see the abomination of desolation stand up in the holy place, that at that point they are to flee those that are in Judea to flee to the mountain mountains. So, you know, I believe. Um, that that A is actually talking about, you know, the Antichrist when the Antichrist is officially revealed. Um, now, if we look in uh, Revelations, I want to say either 12 or 13, it talks about how uh, the great dragon gave power to the beast. It says for another 42 months. Um, and I believe that beast is the Antichrist. So it seems like the Antichrist is revealed, you know, halfway through the tribulation, um, you know, according to the Bible, you know, it seems like the tribulation is made up of uh, three and a half years and then another three and a half years, which equals seven total years. And this second set 
of three and a half years seems to be like when it's the most worst. You know, you have the Antichrist on the scene. Um, people are being martyred for their faith because, you know, if they don't bow down to the Antichrist. You know, a lot of them are being killed. And then you have all of these judgments that John saw, you know, these trumpet judgments, these uh, vile judgments or bold judgments as some people call them. You know, all of these things that are happening just simultaneously on the earth. So um, you, I've actually heard, you know, some people say the tribulation and then that second set of three and a half years, some will call the great tribulation. Um, but in any case, you know, we see here that Christ is saying, you know, once you see this, basically run, flee into the mountains. And we have to remember Christ was talking to Israel here. He says he came only to talk to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. So at this time, this was all information for Israel and what they were to expect um, to usher in when Christ will return, the signs that will happen. So um, another thing I want to keep in mind here is in 22, it says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. So the salvation that uh, the salvation that jesus is talking about for israel this is a you know a physical salvation uh in this particular context if you read through revelations we'll actually you know you actually see how the antichrist really is coming after israel and you know they'll get to a point where when christ comes back he's going to save them because he's going to uh, destroy the antichrist and all those who follow him but until that, until Christ comes back, they have to survive this tribulation period. So, you know, keep in mind that this particular salvation Christ is talking about is a physical one. So now we're going to go to Matthew, same chapter, but verses 37 through 41. Now, I want to keep in mind the comparison that Christ makes. And then we're going to talk about how this relates to what we know about the rapture in which you know Paul describes so okay it reads but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until that day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, and the other left. So, um, you know, there'll be people who will say, well, you know, you see two people, one taken and the, and the other left. So they make it seem as such. And I did, honestly, for many years, I honestly thought to say, hey, well, this is obviously talking about the rapture. Um, but let's notice the comparison that Christ makes his returning to. He says he talks about um, how in the days of Noah, so shall his return be. So we all know about the ark and Noah building it in the great flood and only him and his three sons, his wife and his daughter in laws. Uh, are the only ones that survived as far as humans, humanly speaking. We know about the two, you know, male and female of each animal. But we see only eight souls survive. So, in that time, you know, Noah was building this ark. God made a covenant with Noah to save him because it says he was a righteous man and he had found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So, um, you know, he made a covenant to save him and his, his family. So Noah made the ark. They got on the ark. Everyone else, obviously in the world, they didn't, you know, I'm a, I believe the Bible says I know it was a preacher of righteousness. So I'm assuming that he was warning people of these things, you know, um, now the Bible doesn't say exclusively that, so I won't say that that is necessarily what happened, but, um, Nonetheless, if they were warned, they did not heed the warnings. Um, and if they if they weren't if they were not warned, then, you know, that was just a judgment that, you know, God had for the earth outside of Noah and his family. 
But, you know, it talks about basically they were living their life just oblivious to this judgment coming. They didn't know this judgment was coming until it was already here and it was too late. So then he says in 39, he says, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. Now, with Noah and the ark, that whole event was a destructive act. Okay, when we think about the rapture, the rapture is actually uh, uh, an event where actually life is given. Okay, you think about what Paul talks about in 1 Thessalonians 4. He says how the dead in Christ will rise up first. So they're going to be dead, those dead in Christ was going to, are going to be physically resurrected first and transformed. And then those that are still alive are going to be transformed next. And everyone's going to be caught up together to meet Christ in the air, in the clouds. Compare that to what Christ is saying about his coming as far as here in Matthew 24. He uses he uses the account of Noah. Well, that was a very dis disastrous act where the whole world was wiped out outside of eight people. So, you know, this this when we and when we we, we will see that Christ's return is going to be very destructive. And that's why he is using uh, this case of Noah to showcase the same way it was destructive. What happened in Noah's time is the same way it's going to be destructive when the Son of Man comes. And it's going to be surprising to all those who don't take heed to this warning. So now, I want to look at Luke 17, 26 to 37. And I'm not going to read it all, but if you see that, you know, Luke, he this is the same conversation uh, recorded from Luke's perspective. And he, you know, gave the Noah account that Christ talked about. But here is an added event that apparently Christ talked about that wasn't recorded in Matthew. And, you know, he apparently talked about Lot. So he says, starting at 32, he says, well, I'll start at 31. It says, in that day, he, he which shall be upon the housetop. And his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall, shall preserve it. Then Lot goes basically into the same thing that Matthew talks about. How there will be two people in one place, one taken and the other one left. Now notice something. Let's look at 37. It says, and they answered and said unto him, where, Lord? And he said unto them, wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered. Now, there is a, a significance to that statement. Both Matthew and Luke recorded Christ saying that about wherever the, you know, the body is, these eagles will be gathered. And we will see that it's actually dealing with a a so these eagles gathering around bodies is actually revolved around a destructive event. We'll see. Remember, at the rapture, no one is dying. No one is dying. People are being resurrected and given glorious bodies. We will see at Christ's second coming, there will be plenty of death and destruction and, and, and carnage. And as we will see, files of the air eating the dead flesh of these people who will be slain by Christ. Um so there is something that I do want to take note. Um now when we looked at Matthew 24 we saw how when Matthew recorded Christ as uh talking about Noah and the ark he says how the flood came and took took them away it took them away uh let me see if i have it here uh yes so here in the luke account let's look at the word that luke uses in place of how matthew recorded how it took regard to the flood took them away look at 27 here it says they did eat they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. So 
when we see this word took or taken, we see how Matthew used it as a way to say they were taken by the flood or they were destroyed, they were killed. Here, Luke, you know, literally says the word, so it's easier for us to understand, oh, okay, they were destroyed. Not to mention, when we think of Noah, we automatically understand that story. You know, if they were taken away, they were destroyed in the flood. Okay, right, we get it. So we keep this same understanding in light of what Christ is saying and how his return is is, is going to be a lot of uh, death and destruction. And Christ is telling people to run and, you know, don't look back. You know, if you're on your housetop, don't go back in your house for your stuff. You know, it's like very urgent, very panicky. We don't see any of that surrounding the rapture. It just kind of happens. You know, Paul said in the twinkling of an eye, it just happens out of nowhere with no precursors. Here, Christ is laying out all these precursors that will let us know when, when we can anticipate or when the world can anticipate him coming back. You know, and furthermore, he gives a, a parable about a fig tree saying that when you see the a uh, fig tree uh, sprout is leaves, you know, summer is nigh. That means summer is near. And Christ also talked about the uh, Pharisees saying how they were uh, hypocrites, how they can discern the weather, but they can't discern the times. So all of these signs and precursors are letting us know, hey, we can expect that Christ is returning soon. So, you know, if we look, we see now two women 35 two women uh, shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other left so as opposed to thinking that the one taken rever refers to a good thing that they're being raptured and the other left being a bad thing that hey you missed the rapture it's actually the opposite both in noah and lot's cases the good were left in other words they were spared but the bad were taken in other words, they were destroyed. And we literally see these different renditions of words uh, meaning the same thing in the context in which it's being used. Matthew says they were taken by the flood. Luke says they were destroyed by the flood. In any case, we still understand that in the flood, they perished. So when we see about two people being in the same place, one taken in light of how this chapter is going in the event that's being described, taken actually refers to uh you know evil people or people who are not heeding the warning of christ when he returns versus those who do now take he said remembers lot's wife so you can remember when lot was running out of the city what happened lots running they were told not to look back but what did Lot's wife do? She turned back and she turned into a pillar of salt. She perished. So you can literally take the same thing and say, hey, there should be two people in the field. And let's refer that to Lot and his wife. One shall be taken and the other one left. Well, why was one taken? Well, according to Christ, he told those who are on the housetop not to go back and for your stuff, those who are in the field, you know, to, to not go back to your field, to keep just to run, to go, to flee. Well, Lot's wife was one who would have been one of those ones. If she was on a housetop, she would have went back into her house for her things, for her stuff. And consequently, she perished because of it. She was warned and she didn't heed those warnings and she perished because of it. So this is actually talking about, uh, people who die versus people who are spared because they are fleeing according to what Christ is warning them to do as opposed to people being raptured out and people being left the good taken up and the, and the unbelieving left and this is actually the opposite the good are left and the bad are taken out so um you know, I won't go through, you know, all of this, but you can just kind of see the addresses I have pulled up. Genesis 6, 17 through 18. We see that, uh, you know, the flood, uh, you know, was meant to kill everybody. But, you know, like we talked, Noah found grace in the eyes of, of God. So him and his family were spared. They entered the ark and the floods didn't come until they entered. 
and that's another thing um you know we we tend to see this this kind of pattern where you know when god is going to pass his judgment that the righteous it seems like the righteous tend to be you know removed if they heed to if they heed to god's warning they are removed safely from it um okay and the same thing here as far as lot the story of lot we see that you know they weren't even the angels said that we can't even you know do what we need to do until you leave so we actually see here that you know they were safely out but unfortunately you know as we talked about last wife didn't make it out because she turned around and turned to a pillar of salt so here i actually do want to read this revelations 19 11 through 21 and whenever we see this phrase about wherever the body is there so that you know the eagles will be gathered i just want to show how that's dealing with destruction and the significance that has in understanding in matthew 24 and we're reading about two people being somewhere and one taken and the other left because i just want to really drive that point home because you know people who believe in post-tribulation rapture love to use matthew 24 and they go straight to that because it does look like a rapture just the way it's said but that's why it's so important to get context it's so important to rightly divide and establish your points and to be consistent in those points so we're going to read revelation 19 11 to 21 all right and i saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true this being jesus and in righteousness he doth judge and make war his eyes were as a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of god we know who that is and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine white clothes in fine linen white and clean so here we see the saints are actually coming with christ i didn't go back far enough but uh some verses back we actually see that the saints are clothed in righteousness and these clothes are fine linen white and clean so you know we're actually coming back with christ as a, you know as opposed to how we would think the rapture the rapture is when we go up here we're making the connection that Matthew 24 here can be connected with Revelations 19. So in Revelation 19, we're actually coming back with Christ as opposed to people thinking in Matthew 24 that we're actually going up. If Matthew 24 and 19 coincide with one another, and according to this, the saints are coming back, then Matthew 24 can't be about a rapture because we, we're already with him coming back according to what we see here in revelation 19 okay so let's keep going verse 15 and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with the rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of almighty god and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written king of kings and lord of lords and i saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great god that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sat on them and the flesh of all men both free and bond both small and great and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him that that which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, and which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. 
So when we see in Matthew 24 and, and Luke 17 um, about how wherever the body is or the carcass is, there where the eagles be or the fowls of the air be, this is literally what's, what's talking, what this is talking about. This is talking about destruction. Okay, that can be the rapture. The rapture was when people are given life. The Christ's second coming is when he takes life. It says he comes to make war. Remember, first he came as a, a humble little lamb. Born in a manger, he came as a lamb, lamb of God. Now he's come back as a lion. He says he's come back to make war. He come back to make war, and it's a physical thing. Now, yeah, I do understand that Christ, he said he came not to bring peace, but to divide, you know, with the sword. But that was dealing with who would believe on him and who wouldn't. Here, at this point, we it looks like people have basically made their choice. Now he just kind of come in a clean house. So, um, you know, I just wanted to do this video and just to show that. Uh, Matthew 24, when it talks about two people being in the place and one taken and the other left, is not talking about the rapture, um, but indeed is actually talking about, you know, the one taken is actually the one destroyed and the one left is actually the one spared. So, um, you know, I, I pray that, you know, I wasn't too confusing in my what I'm saying, sometimes I kind of get lost in my own words and my own thoughts get jumbled together. But, you know, I pray that I was clear as I need to be to get across what I was trying to get across. So in any case, I pray that God got the glory first and foremost out of this video. And I pray that whoever this is intended to see this video will see it and be blessed and edified by it. Until next time, I love you all and God bless.